Hi, Sustainable Development Goal 7, Affordable and Clean Energy, is about energy for all. Every day we use energy and electricity for heating, cooling, cooking, transportation and communication. We know that uh, every year the demand for energy and electricity is increasing. At the same time, uh, we also know that uh, some of our main energy resources are coming to an end. There is an ongoing discussion about how to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And we also know that a lot of people around our globe are still dependent on dirty fuel for cooking and uh, heating. Therefore, it comes quite naturally that the United Nations has special, paid special attention to energy and electricity supply. Uh, in year 2050, uh, the General Assembly decided that uh, energy and electricity should be one of the sustainable development goals. Uh, for those of you who are interested to learn more about these goals, you can look into this document, which is a declaration from that meeting. Uh, I still prefer to look at this document where we can see how we have done during the last two, three years in terms of sustainable development. This report consists of four sections. Uh, in the first section, we can read what we have done good so far and where we have to do improvements. The second section explains that uh, Sustainable Development Goal 7 has to be integrated with the other SDGs. In the third section, we can pay a notice to the fact that in different parts of the world, there are different challenges when it comes to SDGs. And in the last section, we can see which are the areas for priorities when it comes to future development. Uh, my presentation today uh, consists of five sections. First, I will look into the argument for SDGs 7 and the aim and goal. Then I will look into the current energy system, how it works and uh, what options we have in the future. In section 4, we are looking into potential and possibilities to integrate different energy resources and I have invited a guest speaker for this section. Uh, finally, I will look, we look into future challenges. When we look into the argument for SDG 7, we can find at least four. The first two, one in five people still lack access to modern electricity and the fact that three billion people rely on wood, coal, charcoal and animal waste for cooking and heating are primarily linked to the developing countries. Uh, the arguments three and four on the other hand can be linked to, to the developed countries. For example, we know that energy is the dominant contribution to climate change and accounting for around 60% of total global greenhouse gas emission. And therefore, of course, we have to look into different potentials to reduce this uh, green gas house. Then, if you look at the aims and goals of Sustainable Development Goal 7, we can see that there are five of them. First of all, we have to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable and modern energy services. Secondly, we have to substantially increase the share of renewable energy. Third, we have to improve our energy efficiency. And fourth, improve cooperation on different levels, public, private level. And of course, we have to upgrade the technology, the goal number five. If we then look at the current energy system and what the future might look like, we can see that we today have a centralized energy system, meaning that we have utilities 
we have transmission, we have distribution, and we have end users. At the left hand side, we have utilities in terms of power plants, and then we have companies transmitting the energy, and then we have distribution, most often local energy companies. Uh, in the future, we might have something that we call microgrids. Microgrids are islanded systems, meaning that they can be disconnected from the main grid, utilities at the bottom. At the top, we can see we have wind farms, we have solar systems, and these are directly connected to individual households, which we most often need some kind of technological devices so that they become smart. Uh, we also need battery capacities and operation systems that can handle all this automatically. Uh, these kind of microsystems are in the development process. When we're looking into smart microgrids and looking at research, we can conclude that uh, there are a certain components that has to go, go together. We have to have technology development, we have to have the legislation, and we have to have the consumers on the same track. In this constellation, we can see that there is an emergence new service systems, which is called energy as a service. And this is something that will be discussed in the future. If we want to make big leaps into reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, I think we have to look at the big players. One of, of Hanken's partner companies is Wärtsilä, and they are producing and selling energy solutions to companies and communities, organizations, states and cities. And when we look into the website, we can read that uh, their new service is towards 100% renewables. Of course, comes the question, what is this? I have asked Jukka Pekka Niemi from Wärtsilä to come here and explain what it is and how they look into the future and energy solutions. So let's see what uh, Jukka Pekka Niemi has to say about what is their last services offered. Company. So I say welcome to Jukka Pekka Niemi. Hi Jukka Pekka. Hi Vela. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm uh, fine, thank you. Uh, when I look at your website, the Vertela Diesel website, I can read the revolution of renewables has started. The energy system are changing towards 100% renewables and we at Vertela can make it happen through technology and innovation. So, you could explain a little bit, what does this towards 100% renewables mean? Yeah, that's a good question. and. Uh, uh, one that we very much like to answer. So this is part of Wärtsilä's renewed vision. So okay. uh, within the energy sector and mm. the power sector, we are envisioning a world that can go towards 100% renewable energy future. And what it means is that we feel and we know that technologies exist mm. today in today's world uh, where we, by political and economical choice, can decide to make a world that is based on renewable energy. Mm -hmm. um, that is in core what our vision means, uh, or what it is. And what it means in practice is that we, we would like to tell the world and we would like to educate the world on what it could mean in practice to build a world that is mm -hmm. based on 100% renewable. And um, practically, uh, it, it means that we look at energy systems, mm -hmm. at power systems, for example, at Finland or mm -hmm. any other country, we, we look at how the system is built, mm -hmm. we model it mm -hmm. uh, together with renewables, so adding vast amounts of renewables, mm -hmm. and we determine how we can move to a power system which is based on 100% renewable energy. Okay. Um, it does not mean necessarily that we do not use other types of power generation than renewable mm -hmm. energy, but it means that we harness the power of renewable energy to, for example, uh, create uh, synthetic gas, for mm -hmm. example, so that we, instead of burning natural gas, which is a fossil mm -hmm. fuel, mm -hmm. uh, we can burn synthetic gas that is made using renewable power, which then in turn makes the power system 100% mm -hmm. renewable. Okay, 
Thank you for these very good answers, and let's continue. Good Thank luck you. in the future. Thank you. Thank you. If I now then try to sum up the discussion and look into the future challenges, we can see and make a distinction between developing countries and developed countries. If we start with the developed countries, it is all about how we can in the future reduce the greenhouse gas emission. And this will mean that we have to focus on technology, legislation and new business models. For the developing countries, it still and will be in the future how to access clean fuel and stable energy supply. And for these countries, we have to focus on finance, infrastructure and political stability, how to secure that.